Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, After Buzzers. Welcome to a Spotlight On. I am your host, Tony Moore. And as we said in our Edition Days recap, we are bringing you some past cast members. Oh my God, there's a <laughs> lot going on, Marissa. There's <laughs> lots. There's a lot. So, as we said in our Edition Days recap, we want to go back and talk to some of the past cast members of our favorite soap opera days of our lives in celebration of 50 years of days and today is no exception we have ex nick fallon in the house mr blake barris how are you blake i'm doing great happy to be here thank you thank you for joining us and of course with his hair all high and mighty but we, you can't say that with blake here because well, now my hair is nothing well i don't know because i feel like <laughs> i feel like i looked away and you like added a few inches <laughs> I, to I, I had to shush a little i think you've got the edge Still, yeah, yeah. Man. I have product too. If yours is falling, I can help you out. Oh, great. Yeah, see? <laughs> see? We have my other co host, Mark J. Freeman. There we are. So, we are going to take a little trip down memory lane and talk about some things with Blake and find out what he's been up to since he was last seen in Salem. Oh, you know what? That, that was, was you. Mean. <laughs> I know. I made sure I turned my volume So, I, I get apologize, Marissa. I love you. Hi, Marissa in the booth. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. I usually turn that off. So, Blake, how's, how's everything been since we last saw you in Salem? Life after <laughs> death is <laughs> great. <laughs> yes, we saw you. The last time we saw uh, Nick, he was a bloody mess in a park. Yeah. And had just been shot. I, You know what? When, when well, I he, was, he, was, uh, he was in the hospital as well, kind of a cadaver. Well, no, no. One, no one paid attention to that. <laughs> We, 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 we only rewatch the death scene over and over again and in slow mo, thanks to, to Days of Our Lives. But when I, when I first saw that scene. Did they do that? They play it over like I mean, you know, they do flashbacks all the time. So they like, you know, because they have to see, you know, you take the bullet and like fall and then. It's leave daytime. The message. You have yeah. to replay it about 12 oh, times. Totally. Of course. For the people that missed that day. Yeah. Well, yeah. For the people that missed that day, for the people who just tuned in, for the people who like, you know, looked down and was like, oh my God, what happened to him? I so, was actually just thinking that the other day now with YouTube and everything, like mm -hmm. I want to write to days and just be like, okay, we don't really need to do that anymore. Because if somebody doesn't know, they can just go online and watch the past episodes. And find <laughs> yeah, out what happened. Right. We don't need to repeat everything that happens. We twice. we we need to see that happen because <laughs> you know there could be a clue or something that we might have missed. No. So uh, when I watched that scene, I do remember thinking, oh, Blake is so lucky because I'm pretty sure we all practice like if we were in a scene, how we would die. Mm. And like, you got to actually do it. Yeah. So I've never done that. It was, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. No, no we all do. <laughs> yeah. We all do. Yeah, we all do. We all, we all figure out that one scenario, like if I'm in this scene, this is how, how I would How would die. you die? How would I die? Let's see it. I don't know. We'll see. It depends. For the day's executives, here's your chance to play no, Maxine's no, no. Listen, son. No, no, no. L listen, we're still hashtag Maxine's son. <laughs> so I don't want to kill my character off yet. So I'm going to hold off on that because okay. I don't want to give them any okay. ideas. Got it. Got um, it. So how did you feel, Blake, back then when, because you had came on days for just mm. another stint because mm. we thought you had died in the river. Um, right. But then you had the dramatic re-entrance mm. and then they officially killed you off. So, I mean, how did you feel about this character that you originated being now officially dead? Dead. Um, well, you know, I was really excited when they when they asked me back. Uh, I thought it was like a really cool direction they wanted to take the character. And, and coming back to the show was never something that was like on my mind, but they made a really kind of attractive offer. And I mm -hmm. thought, you know, I was like, yeah, let's do it. It sounds great. Yeah. And I love the direction that they took Nick. I thought it was um, a lot more interesting than he was the first time around. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I was just supposed to be on for a year, and they said, you know, basically, can you know, how long will you stay on? And I said, well, how about let's just do another six months, 
And um, so that's when they came up with that river bit. So that was all part of the um, idea that, yeah. that was all kind of preconceived. Okay. Um, so it was supposed to be like a fake out thing Got in the river. It. And yeah. then, uh, so, you know, I was, I was um, s sad to see him go because I thought he was like a, an amazing character, one of the most amazing characters I've ever played. And mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, deeply misunderstood and just kind mm -hmm. of... Um, you know, obviously wreaked a lot of havoc, but was 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 really cool. I thought he like brought a lot of kind of um, an element to Salem that wasn't there. Yeah, and uh, I thought that was great. Um, but I, you know, was was creatively with just I liked the idea of kind of moving away from daytime uh, for the time being, and um, and you know, kind of starting to explore some other stuff. Yeah. Because when, uh, going back to the beginning of Nick, as you mentioned, Nick came in as a very, like, geeky, nerdy, like, nerdy yeah. kind mm -hmm. of fun yeah. character. But yeah, he's totally nerdy, different. Like, at a dance yeah. or something, like, tripping around and all that stuff. <laughs> well, he was modeled after Napoleon Dynamite originally. Ah, yes. got it. Yes. And then it kind of became, I went into, like, a graduate-esque storyline with Billy mm -hmm. and yeah. losing my virginity. Right. And then he kind of became this, you know, just kind of, like, you know, pathetic, like, puppy dog lover to Chelsea, who mm -hmm. just, you know, she walked all over him, and yeah. he was just like, oh, man, I'll never, <laughs> this will never happen. <laughs> uh, but then, um, and then he went psycho with Melanie, which I thought was Completely really cool. Completely psycho and dark. And yeah, I love really that stuff. Cool. Yeah. And I think, like, I think um, Gary Tomlin, who was the head writer at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I remember like when they called me up to tell me the first time that, you know, they're like, good news, you're going into a great storyline, bad news, you're fired. And, <laughs> but I was fine with it because like I was young and I was just like, oh, this is great. You know, yeah. I, like I had the run that I wanted to have on the show and I was eager to start acting in some other, um, you know, contexts. Yeah. And uh, but but that was the aspect of the character that they brought back when they did. I don't know. if It was just like kind of like skin deep research like or <laughs> or if they were just like you know that's the best part but either way they were right i mean it was the i thought the most interesting aspect was like the kind of obsessive uh part of nick fallon and, and that was something i had a lot of fun exploring yeah because oh nick totally went dark and and deep and and like creepy almost especially during that time with melanie and especially when you came back mm. like from the like the river part the river, yeah, that, yeah i was just like Ooh, i had a lot of fun with it yeah <laughs> yeah what what other parts did you enjoy about about playing nick with especially with that wide range that you could play him with like what else did you enjoy just about the that mm. character i mean i guess like i mean i honestly thought they wrote it really beautifully like mm -hmm. uh and and I was I was surprised because I think you know soap operas kind of have a uh, like the stereotype right is that 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 it's a kind of they're all two dimensional characters and mm. people but I really thought they wrote an amazing character and I I had so much fun kind of getting into the layers of why was he so obsessed with Gabby like why yeah. was he alienating himself you know like was he so thoroughly kind of isolating himself in the community and. And forcing people to hate him and, and yeah. kind of, you know, he became this pariah, um, but, you know, kind of in an ivory tower and it's kind of lonely at the top. And then, mm -hmm. and then um, you know, it killed him, basically. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. It was just, I thought there was so much there to mine and, and play with. And, um, you know, I think he got kind of like power hungry for a while and oh, there was yeah, this did. like you know everybody's heads will roll kind of <laughs> yeah. michael corleone thing going on and yeah. i remember when you went to kate and you were like you're gonna give me a job and this is what you're gonna yeah. Yeah. yes i yes. was like you know nick <laughs> <laughs> just to see someone talk to kate yeah. like that is like yeah so uh, demanding chris here was asking what do you remember most of your first day on days oh my gosh the very first day very the first very first day. day so i was that napoleon dynamite shit or stuff and, <laughs> and like you know you're like i had to do this olive trick, like a trick with a martini glass, okay. which I don't actually remember what it was, but um, Ashley Benson was Abby and Rachel mm -hmm. Melvin was uh, Chelsea. And, mm -hmm. and it was, yeah, it was my first, you know, day doing anything. And um, what I remember, I remember, I, you know, like I came from a kind of, uh, I'd never watched soap operas and I had like a theater background and, and especially <laughs> right after I graduated, I think I was just a little bit of a punk and like, I just like, 
I was like a little cocky. Yeah. And so and so they came, one of the producers, a really nice guy came up to me and he said, so get this, like <laughs> what if you did this whole monologue like a film noir? Uh, and I just, I was just like, why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember like Christian Alfonso or somebody like pulled me up, pulled me aside and they're like, you're fucking awesome. Like, like that you just like told the pro executive producer yeah. to like, you know, screw off and that you weren't going to do that. <laughs> but I wasn't trying like I wasn't I, yeah. I just thought it was I did. I was like, well, why would he start acting like he was in a film noir? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah. Um, I think probably somebody gave me that note. Now I'd like totally do it. Right. But um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, so that was like part of my first day. But uh, you know, Rachel was really amazing. She showed me mm. all around the set, and yeah. and Ashley was really wonderful to work with. And oh, and I also remember I um, I think the first scene I did, like I was just so much louder than everybody else because uh, I'd been doing the theater, theater. I get and that like a lot. I people get that were like, oh. <laughs> like, geez, like shh, shh, calm, calm down. down. Yeah, and. Uh, and I think I noticed it too. Like I remember watching, uh, coming out onto the stage, and I think it was Christian and Peter were in a scene, and, and I was watching them. And I was like, I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think so too. And I was just like, oh, okay, so that's, okay, that's the thing. Right. That's that, great. That's amazing. Were you? Were you? Did you ever watch Days um, at all before you went on? No, I had never really watched Days, but um, I did um, a in June in uh, my junior year of high school. I did like for an assignment. Uh, I think on it was the Crucible and the Scarlet Letter. Mm -hmm. I decided to turn them into a soap opera. <sighs> so uh, Passions was the one that I oh, happened upon, sweet oh, Jesus. and so I started watching some Passions, oh. and we I modeled the whole movie like they made a movie about it <laughs> oh my after gosh. Passions, and there was lots of you know tags and you know kind of those shots of like people yeah. talking like if I'm talking to you, I'd yeah. like talk to you like this because right. that, you know because right. I just can't bear to look at you. <laughs> um, I get that a lot too. <laughs> comes useful in life as it well. Does. So, <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It does. No, it, I, I remember uh, Martha Madison told me uh, when she started Days, she tried to like go back and like figure out like the history of everyone and like how the families were right. and all that. And um, I'm like, good luck, sister. Because I, didn't do I actually had to write yours down. I had to go and Google it. I was like, I have to remember now how <laughs> Nick is a Horton. So your parents are just Jessica and Joshua Fallon. If you say so. And Jessica, <laughs> Jessica, your mother is Marie Horton. Marie Horton's your grandmother. Okay. And by you, I mean yeah, Nick. Nick. Okay. Um, and then Marie is Tom and Alice's daughter. I love that, okay. that you have that that figured out. I said I had to do it. It was right as he was walking in. I was like, oh, dang, God, I got that done in time in case yeah, he quizzes me. Listen, if I... If, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think you might have quizzed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, uh, somebody else that was on our show said you guys probably know more of the history than than the actors. Oh, do I find the I, fans are like yeah. much better. Well, these yeah, and these guys always are always Susie and well, they and show them they're always I mean, checking like, us. I think like you know, if you ask me about like The Sopranos, I might be able yeah. to like, yeah. tell you about that. But that's the one thing that that the fans liked about your character and the way that you played Nick. You just you were just brilliant with it and people yeah, always you. commend you on on how well you played him and how in depth and committed you were thank to you him. so kudos to that thanks Wait. a lot Sh no Susie problem. just said Cheryl I hope they ask him that but I'm now I'm looking to see what Sh oh what Cheryl asked because now I'm you piqued my curiosity well <laughs> what could she be asking well Leah uh Mulder says Nick was hot the second time when he came back not the first <laughs> not, the, not the first, you not the first one, much. but like the second time. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that was that. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, maybe this that that they're hoping that you're actually because you could not be dead potentially. It's daytime. Yeah, I've heard a lot of theories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she said maybe since Gabby may be getting out, uh, you may be coming back too. Is Gabby going back? I, that's rumors. She rumors. is actually. Rumors. She. Uh, <laughs> it was just, yeah. Camila's going back. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it would that convince you to go back? I mean, because <laughs> you just lit up when we mentioned. Camila. Oh, I just think it's great. I love Camila. <laughs> yeah, I love Camila. Well, you guys had like a, a lot of scenes together. How was it working with with Camila? And... She is the best. Yeah, she's just. I loved working with Camila. She's just so vivacious and like 
nice and wonderful to work with and she's beautiful and um we had an awesome working relationship and friendship and i i just like she has a very special place in my heart yeah because she too uh got great scenes as far as like especially the river when she's an amazing actress yeah she's awesome she's she's and outside of that she's very funny as well yes exactly Mm -hmm. i i text her i said you are still a winner to me well and i was reading too that they were you were listed as one like it was the year that you uh, that were the last time you were on that they were saying that you were one of the big snubs mm, at the mm-hmm. Emmys that you should have been. Ah, I agree. Uh, I'm sure others would agree. Too. Yeah, you no, should have. You should have. And everyone up. in here is too saying how much they loved. They, they loved. Uh, you are a frighteningly good psycho. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Cheryl wants to know. Um, how did Days convince you to pose naked with a heart pillow? <laughs> Do you get that question a lot? There was no convincing. But like... <laughs> they were like, oh wait, he's walking around with the heart pillow. Let's still throw that in the scene. <laughs> no, it's just like, they're like, this is the scene you're doing. Like, yeah. right. you know, you, you don't get to say like, I'm right. not doing that. <laughs> you or, mean like you did I earlier? I didn't think I had an option. If I did, <laughs> that picture wouldn't be on the internet. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I thought it was fine. Like you know, me and Camila had fun with that scene. It was so that picture you, haunts me a little really bit. Naked. But uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, there was like a contraption, right? That that you wear. Uh, which I honestly, like, I was like, well, what is that? I was like, <laughs> can I just do it naked? And they're like, no. no. Yeah. Just I was in case. like, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. Anyway. Well, kudos to the wardrobe department she says, for, that, for, was for it awkward that for you. Sure. Was it awkward? Yeah. I mean, a little <laughs> bit. I mean, I think, um, I think that the contraption was awkward. Right. Was mm-hmm. the awkward thing. I don't mind. I don't know. Like, I think as an actor, like you're constantly like, changing and clothes and I don't know you just right. kind of forget about it like you don't it, Another day it's not a big office. thing to me kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> um who else did you uh enjoy working with while you were there because you you had scenes with like with a ton of wonderful people and, and veterans of the show yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know well you know like uh, it was great to work with Christian and Lauren like I got a lot of uh, screen time with them and uh, I just think both of them are amazing to work with Ali Sweeney was awesome yeah. to work with. Oh, yeah. We really developed like a great kind of friendship and um, uh, kind of way of working together. Uh, Galen and Kate Mancy are two of my favorite people in the world. They're yeah. just the best, and uh, I'm still in contact with both of them. And mm-hmm. um, and Chandler, Chandler was uh, I think like one of the the best actors I've worked with. Yeah. I think he's just amazing. He's yeah, yeah, everyone. Truly, Mrs. Chandler. I they, see that a lot in the chat room. Yeah, people are like, "Where's Chandler coming back?" Yeah, and I'm like, "I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know him like that." Um, who did you not get a chance to work with that you wish Nick could have interacted with and got a chance to to have scenes with? No, I mean, I think I made my way around. Really, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, I I, I think uh, Joe Mascolo, like Stefano, would have been yeah. cool to work with, right? Yeah. Like, and Eileen Davidson. I think that would have been great. Somebody actually mentioned, said something in here. I was, I kind of saw it that they said they wished that you were there when with with. Henry yeah, Zimmer and Eileen and I, I, I really got along with her. Uh, just I like her vibe. And uh, anyway, we've been cool to. Can you imagine if if Nick and Kristen got together and did like. Evil yeah, Eileen and I like that idea. That, that would, would I, I think that would have worked really well. We would have like burned the well, world up. You know, yeah. Days exploded. is a cougar town now. We have all oh, decided. Yeah. Like it's just, I mean, that's just. I think that's how they're going with everybody now. Cool. Every yeah. relationship now is. Well, there's there's not oh, that great. many guys in in Salem, and all the girls are just kind of bouncing around. Is it true? Is the ratio it's, outweighed? Yeah. It's, yeah. Hence why I am all about hashtag Maxine Sun. Oh, I thought you were going to say mine. What? Hashtag bring Jack back. No, I think hashtag Maxine Sun is <laughs> better. You and Jack. Then we yes. got two more guys. There we go. There we then, go. then that can work. Then that can and work. then if Camila comes back, maybe we can convince Blake. <laughs> <laughs> so who who at Days uh, really helped you uh, while, while you were there, like in, in the beginning, kind of? You know, took you by the hand and showed you the ropes and, Rachel. and gave you great advice. Yeah, Rachel Melvin, uh, you know, and was just super great. Showed me the ropes, literally. Mm-hmm. Like, 
No, literally, there were no ropes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she she was kind of the one to to show me around, and and we're still friends. And coming from you know such a, a theater background, and then coming into soaps where you know everything is so fast paced and so quick, was that intimidating for you to to now be in this realm of like having to have that emotion so quickly and you only get one shot one chance opportunity sometimes it was great i mean i i think it was like the best training you can get because i think that you know as an actor it's it's good to not get too precious about what you're doing and to be really instinctual and and i think i was especially at the beginning like a more a more heady actor like Mm. i i think i could get in my own way and i think that days really like kind of trained me how to get out of that way yeah nice. and like to you know you just don't have time you just do it you know and yeah. you're like here i am in the situation you know you like blink it, the, whatever action mm-hmm. and like there either you're there and that's your girlfriend and that's your mother and whatever and like right. that is the reality that you were operating under and you yeah. maybe know your lines you maybe don't but that's kind of like real life too yeah. and like yeah. And you you know you just exist and like I you know try to ride the wave of you know and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but um I just think there's nothing like it as mm-hmm. far as training goes and I feel like a a confidence as an actor from a kind of having come out the other side. Yeah. If um if Nick hadn't been killed by Gabby. Hmm. Um, Which is still a possibility. I mean, it, listen, anything <laughs> in, Salem. in Salem is a possibility. That's right. That's right. Which which direction do you think he would have gone in? Because I, right before he was murdered, um, he looked like he was on the path of like of redemption, like redemption, and, and kind of going, oh, I wasn't on the right path. I'm now going to kind of steer and kind of mm. you know. Do you think he would have gone that way, or or well, how, I think how would like, you have liked I to mean, see him? I mean, you know, I think. Um, People change and people don't change, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I think uh, there's a certain amount of change that happens after a certain age. And, and, I, and I do think people are capable of making huge changes in their life. But, you know, your operating system is your operating right. system. Right. And I think that, you know, you can, you can change, like, the context that you're operating in in order to make your life healthier and, like, you know, be a better source of you know good in the world but um you know that you have the system that you have in a certain respect Mm -hmm. and i think that like i think it would be interesting to to trace that challenge for him and to figure out where and how he would be a positive contribution to society Um, i think he's like mentally uh, unstable and like you know possibly like bipolar and borderline personality disorder or something you know Um, but i thought it was it would have been interesting to maybe explore the psych what is going on in With that him. weird brain of his because mm-hmm. yeah, he did have a a very interesting way of thinking mm. he was a very interesting character. well and i think he was like brilliant in a lot of ways it was, was kind of misguided yeah so i mean the trick would be like you know just putting that that hyperactive brain to like to use right more positively but i think even seeing like the challenge of that not working is still interesting yeah. well and I, I think that's why i liked when I, I don't remember what the job was that it wasn't some sort of science job that you were trying to get or in the labs or something of mad World, yeah something yeah. along those lines and i thought because i always feel like it's like they either have to be a cop or they have to be a lawyer on the daytime so i was i liked that it's different you had something that fit you like i felt like it fit you you mm. know like nicole now like she's an investigative reporter i'm like Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, yeah, she's nosy. Yeah. She's that's nosy. perfect. You know, yeah. I wish they would put more of thought into that. And more I that do. really yeah. made that's me happy that point. Nick was I mean he kinda came up I mean when he started especially was the nerd, you mm-hmm. know, so yeah. it was like okay, but now he's kind of the mad scientist. Of you that. know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I feel like you kinda thing. how old were you when you started? Uh, twenty what, twenty two? Right. So you yeah. I mean yeah. you aged on you know what I mean, not aged. You know, as old as me. No, it but, did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think a, a young, I mean, obviously, you're, a, a young Nick is very different than a more the, mature Nick. Yeah. You know? And which, speaking of that, which which time did you enjoy the most um, yeah. during your, your time on days? Because, you know, again, you came back quite the a second few times. Time. The second yeah. time? Yeah. Yeah. Was That was I feel after, like... after the river. Yes. Before. Oh, I see what you're saying. I mean, right. Well, um, Maybe I think that after the river stuff was was yeah. was great. I mean, I loved all the stuff. Like I loved working with uh, Freddie and Chandler and Camila during that whole kind of um, nuclear family yeah. struggle. I thought yeah. that that was cool, and it was cool to be part 
of that storyline on that show because I thought it was really brave for Days to finally go there and yeah. uh, important, or maybe not brave so much as important. Um, but uh, um, <clears throat> and I was happy to like be telling that story. Yeah, and that was exciting. But I don't know. I kind of yeah. I loved the mad scientist stuff. I thought that was yeah. really fun. I I still love that scene when uh, they were like in the church and mm, everyone I did looked too. Yeah. and like you came in yeah. and was like oh am I interrupting and I was like <laughs> he's just so nonchalant wow. about it because yeah. this whole time everyone's like he's dead and everyone's been worrying like someone's gonna figure it out and like uh, Kate, Sammy and Gabby are like always on edge and, yeah. and then all of a sudden you just nonchalantly just come back in and I was like <laughs> Yeah, bravo. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> bravo. That was, that great. was a fun scene. Yeah, yeah they're all. And see, this is why we have the chat room too, because they like to fact check us. So they're all telling me that you worked at the university in a lab and you actually invented something. And by you, I mean Nick. Yeah, yeah. I know that it's he's I don't actually mind. not Nick. It's I get fine. that all the way. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and they never showed a funeral, so there is a possibility that. Well, I don't. Well, listen. I think. I think if. I, I think no one would have attended Nick's funeral. That's so true. that's why that's they true. didn't have. Okay. It. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we well, me and Tony would be. We there. don't know that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if I if I were booked that day, I would. Right. <laughs> I would. I would have sat there just like this. He was a good soul. I can, and I'll come in a veil. In a big veil. Uh, a veil and a big black gown. <laughs> so everyone, uh, well, before we go into what you're up to now, what what did you take away from your whole experience of, of days? I think just like a discipline um, and like, a, a, I guess like a confident relationship to my craft. Like, mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was a, a great you know, like I, I, I really valued the the time that I spent there, and I feel like um, I'm I'm a much better like actor in person because of it. Yeah. Now everyone's very anxious to hear about what you have been Coming doing up. after. Yep. Uh, hmm. After you left, they're Days. asking. And you you've had a lot of success as far as with like different projects and movies and stuff. You were in a, a movie called The House of Last Things. That's right, the House of Last Things. And yeah. that did really well in like the film festivals. Yeah, it had so. a good international run on the film festival circuit, and it's a really cool movie with um, R. J. Mitty from Breaking Bad mm -hmm. and uh, Lindsay Hahn, amazing actress. And um, anyway, we shot it up in Portland, and yeah, it's it's on Amazon now, and Netflix is on as well. And uh, yeah, people yeah. Sh I encourage people to watch Make it. Make sure you guys watch it so that way you can see what Blake did after Salem because there is life after Salem. Meth had you were you got two film uh, Yeah, Meth had to uh, one for the what was it? The International Film Festival Gasparilla Film Festival you won Rising Star Award mm -hmm. and Best Supporting Actor Award at the film out S uh, San Diego LGBT Film Festival for yeah. Meth Head. Yeah, Meth Head was a great experience. Um I loved working on that, and um, yeah, both of those are out in the world now, and you can see them. And uh, I just wrapped on two films uh, in, this year, um, and writing has kind of become like a big part of my um, life. And yeah. Uh, I yeah, I just wrote a film uh, which they filmed in Mississippi and will be on Lifetime in June, nice. uh, called nice. The Neighbor. And I have a film called This Shining City. Uh, which uh, we're assembling our cast for, and we're going to shoot in Pennsylvania later this year. Gina Rodriguez. Yes, Gina <laughs> well, is that. amazing. She's on IMDb, so I figured if it's on IMDb, I can say it. <laughs> Gina's uh, a really good friend of mine, so he's like, and she's that. amazing, <laughs> and she wants to do the script, the, the film, oh, and uh, and I just think she's. Uh, Phenomenal, and I'm so excited about all the success she's had recently, yeah. and um, think she's awesome. Yeah, I, I saw that you're a lot of writing and producing credits lately, so I thought mm. that, that's good. What, I mean, you're obviously when you're in this this industry, you have to be a very creative person. Uh, but which are you starting to love more, if that's even possible, the acting side of everything, or now the writing? Well, I think they complement each other really well. Mm -hmm. um, I still look at myself as an actor first. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the writing has been really uh, fulfilling to me, and I'm excited that it's now something that I can, you know, um, do as a job. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's an exciting prospect to me. So if, if you could write a character for yourself, 
one that you haven't played yet, but you are just really itching to play. Mm. Can you describe that character? I'm working on it now. <laughs> it's top secret. <laughs> I thought I was and will there happen to be a really queeny guy with big hair in it? <laughs> it was you. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, it's, it's like a it's like a vision come true. Like he he wrote it I, and, and I just and appeared he on could, he couldn't visualize it. <laughs> Sorry, you, you don't have the part. I'm doing it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> See, if your hair was that much a taller, a little bit taller, a little, then, I knew if I wouldn't have cut it, then damn you would have you would have gotten it. <laughs> um, we have some questions in the chat room, and I think we've had uh, quite a few. As I was gonna, going if through. I could, while you're looking, Go I'm ahead. just gonna ask really quick because I feel I felt like when I was looking through your IMDb and. and doing my research which mm. I like to do um, <laughs> I just I, I and I, this is a bad word choice but I feel like a lot of the stuff lately ha seems to be on like a darker side I mean I was just kind of reading the bios and stuff of the films like mm. with the um, meth head and um, swipe even with not dark I don't know I just I, know what you're I feel like and then I saw and then it was like Hannah Montana. <laughs> I was like, wow, he's come a long way from Hannah Montana. <laughs> yeah. Not that Hannah Montana is a bad thing. I'm Although, not saying, I, mean, but I'm I, saying I played too. a zombie on Hannah Montana. so Right. I, I did. And then like... I saw that too. I was like, oh, but he was a zombie. Um, but I didn't. No, is, I'm, is I'm excited. Is it something that you enjoy, like the darker I stuff? love it all. I like doing anything that's good. Um, and But but I, I, I think um, I kind of have been maybe yearning to lighten it up a little yeah. bit. I One of the movies I just did is called Living Room Coffin. And it that even though it really sounds dark cute. no but it's it's yeah. yeah it is it's like a comedy or it's kind of a morbid comedy yeah. but um it, it'll be a kind of uh festival yeah. flick and uh i'm really excited about it i think um this girl jennifer prediger who's the lead of it is amazing and um i th i think it, i think it might come out really well and then i i also just finished a, a screenplay that uh uh we're hoping to make soon um, that's a, like a romantic comedy, and so oh, I've nice. kind of been trying to lighten it up lighten a little up. bit. Yeah. And things, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Pe people just have uh, lots of comments. They, someone has said, Blake, you have a nice body. So, <laughs> kudos to that. Thanks. Um, a lot of people have asked, and I'm almost scared to ask you, <laughs> would you contemplate coming back to Dave's? You know what I what I like to say is like I'm always up for entertaining all options. I think mm, like right. whenever an opportunity presents itself, you know you have to uh, weigh it uh, and see if it's like the right time. And you know, last time, you know, at the moment that they asked me to come back, it was perfect, and I'm really glad I did it. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, I think I think we all enjoyed when you came back too, and I'm sure uh, the characters Gabby, Sammy, and Kate were a little relieved because yeah. If we had to watch them go through Salem, <laughs> looking over whispering their shoulder and, and whispering, yeah. and like, it's it's one of those things. This is one thing that's always interesting about soaps is when something happens, they keep talking about it, and they keep yeah. talking about it in public. Like, <laughs> text each other, email. Do you like some <laughs> some sort of code that was like, remember when we killed Nick? Like, you know, <laughs> don't don't keep like rehashing it and like be like after a while, I got nervous. I was sitting in my house like, did uh, I do it? Like, <laughs> like I feel like I'm I'm an accessory to it. <laughs> um, oh, I know about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did it. Um, during that time, you did have a kind of like a sidekick. Um, I don't know his real name. I always called him the greetings guy. Um, how was that? Um, Who was this? I, I don't know his real name, but he was the older guy that saw oh, them do it. That's right. That's and right. they became that's right. like, you and he know, just kind of disappeared. Yeah, yeah. But how was it working with him and suddenly Nick kind of having this this kind of sidekick that's like, yeah, it was fun. I'm going to protect you. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seemed like a fun guy. Yeah, yeah. he was great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a nice I, guy. I, I don't. I'm so sorry if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> but I don't remember. Of it, he is too I mean, he could be. I mean, but yeah. I don't remember his name. I just I always called him the greetings guy, and every time he came on, that was his thing. Uh -huh. Greetings, and I'd be like, oh my god. Yeah, that they guy's made here. a thing out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no, he knows. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> be careful of that. So uh, if you and if you, it, we'll just put it out there. We're gonna pretend you're coming back. So if you are, <laughs> and and they sit down I'll go with you, because yeah. of your film noir stance on the set, that producer's <laughs> there and says, okay, well, we want your opinion. Yeah. Who do you want us to pair you with? If you got to pick one of your, your 
the women that you got to work with. And this is not saying that one is Eileen better than the on other. the show now. She just sure she could be if that means you're going to be back. Yeah, <laughs> I think Eileen. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like that. Well, they, I like that. They just killed her off. No, they did. But she fell. She fell. She could be missing. Well, I mean. <laughs> As we and as, maybe Nick was there to catch her as we, <laughs> in purgatory. As as we said yesterday, she fell, but there was like a secret Percy shoot that was like, oh Percy. There was a secret shoot that like she fell in that went into a secret cave where she's gonna hide out for the yeah. next you know five yeah. years. Kind until of live off back. the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. A hundred years in solitude type thing. Yeah, I mean anything is possible in Salem. One phone call can change a, a whole storyline. Oh yeah, we learned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is why because I, I missed the phone call. That's how I didn't know that John was that no John longer was no... a Brady or a Demera. Yeah, exactly. And I showed up tapped her buzz, not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, had you paid attention to that phone call and well, not gotten pizza rolls, I was. Then... <laughs> I was just gonna say, you don't steal my line. Then yeah, um, this. Uh... They never close doors on days. <laughs> That's true. I always say that. I, th I think you Leah... always know when someone's going to be listening in because normally they do close the door. But anytime they leave and the door stays open, I always go, oh, someone's going to be listening to the door now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always someone eavesdropping. As, right. As right. we saw right. this this past week. Um, what is this? Martha Madison has a script. Are you interested? I, sure. sure. <laughs> I, lo I love this. That maybe this sure. is her manager, Cindy. Is her manager? She has a script. Are you interested? I'm interested. He's in. He's in. Yeah. Sorry. He's actually. In. Well, Martha has a new project that's coming out uh, in August called Mrs. Winterthorn. Um, oh, I thought and, that was already started. They filmed, oh, okay. but um, but it's coming out in in August. And there's a lot of people like Linda Gray is in it, and uh, Kirsten Storms is in it. So oh, okay. there's a lot of people that are are doing it. So. I don't know where that came from, but Cindy <laughs> Blake is, I would just, is, I'm just is reading what I'm interested <laughs> and, and available. So, so yeah. Um, tell Hashtag us, pizza rolls. So what? Hashtag pizza rolls. Oh my God. <laughs> I talk about pizza rolls a lot. Because when time. I miss <laughs> things on days, I always say it's because I got up to get my pizza rolls. <laughs> so I walked out of the room. But, it's a good so excuse. now it's our well, hashtag. whenever Melanie is on, that's or when Mel he, oh. he tends to... So how is it working with... Um, for? Because I think Cheryl and all these people, they love Melanie. I am not... Who doesn't? Uh, You're not... Oh, you don't. I'm not. I, nothing, I, don't know, I don't know Molly. This is not against Molly. I had an argument with my friend on the way here. It's not about Molly. I just don't like... I just... I just... Yeah. But how was it working with her? <laughs> for everybody in the room. I, I, I love Molly. <laughs> I miss Molly. Yeah, we had a great time working together. Okay, uh, good. And we, on. And, yeah, okay. um, <laughs> don't cut him off. He was sorry, he was sorry. he was giving he was giving praise to, to that Molly was for Burnett. Daquan because I'm sure Daquan, if he's not in here he'll watch this tomorrow. And well, he'll yeah, be happy that he's I, gonna he's that gonna I have about Melanie. For he's him. gonna have your head if yeah. uh, well we kind of sliding doors to each other both times like oh, she came yeah. on and I left and we kind of had that storyline and then I, I came on and she left and she's mentioned you a couple of times this return right yeah your name has come up a few times well I, you know I kidnapped her. <laughs> Hence. And became obsessed with her. Right, exactly. Um, speaking of love, uh, Nikki Nux twenty two asks, "Who does he think Nick's best love interest was over the years? If you can call them love interests, all right, your sexual obsession. I, mean, I don't know. He's had some good ones. I mean, yeah, between Chelsea and Melanie Billy. and mm -hmm. Billy, I think Billy was pretty yeah. good. I mean, that there's nothing pretty... like your first, right? <laughs> right, right. You always remember your first. I remember first. that. I remember because I'm a huge Billy fan. So I that was like that was cool. That but was that cool. was that was that was the see you were setting up the cougarness that's going Julie, on now. Julie's hot yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I but, mean, honestly, I've been pretty lucky. It's it's been a you know all the women I've gotten to work with have been really really great. I think I I liked you and Gabby together. Yeah. I think that was the best. I mean, that was me. the incarnation of the Nick character that I liked the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wish that things didn't go. I mean, I didn't. But like I mean, it. I loved I thought uh, me and Rachel always had great chemistry and yeah. uh, I liked working with. Well, that could a be yeah. a new triangle because I think Billy should come back to be with Bo. So that Hope can stay with Bo back on the show? Well, he's supposed to be coming back for the 50th, but you know that yeah. Hope has a new man. 
Aiden. Uh, Aiden, no, I know, I know. Uh, okay. um, uh, Daniel Cosgrove. Daniel, Daniel is yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so I'm Daniel saying... actually did a reading of uh, my film for me, actually, in oh, New York. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Daniel is... We uh, love Daniel. He's funny. He's and phenomenal. I, and I loved yeah. him with hope. I think Christmas. he's so yeah. good. I, I saw his Emmy reel this year, and I just thought he was I mean, amazing. And, I, and we did a couple of scenes together. I think he's really, really great. Yeah, he's... <laughs> He's very fun to be around. I will tell you I that. I can imagine. Yeah. I see uh, he's done a couple of the. Um, Deidre Hall does those kitchen minute oh, YouTube yeah. things. And yeah, he's yeah. been on a couple and he's really. I'm like, wow, that's not at all what I was expecting him to be like as a. You know, you just see him on the show. I don't get to go to the fan events like Tony does. Well, I only go because I host them. <laughs> but you're still. So I'm, so I'm working. Right. But at least, but I'm saying you you just know him outside of the show. So. Well, that's true. That's what I'm that's saying. And, and none of my comments about Melanie are ever about Molly because I don't know Molly. You may get to know her very soon. Well, I may. I may. I'm, I'm I, hearing rumors. I'm so I'm so looking forward to setting him up one one Sunday and having Molly just walk in and recap with us. Right. And, yeah. and see where his face falls. <laughs> I'll be happy to have her there. I'm sure it'll be a delight. So, um, so Blake, you have. Writing uh, projects coming up. You have more acting gigs coming up. Um, you've been doing a lot since mm -hmm. since you you've left Salem. Yeah, it's been busy. That's good though, because we always uh, fans always do wonder what what happens yeah. to uh, their favorite characters and their favorite people after days. And it's always good to have to know that you're still working and still creating and still mm. doing stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to your. The Lifetime film that you wrote in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because and I'm going to be, oh, yeah. And then there's this movie, Swipe, as well. Right. That he's Swipe. Doing, Tell right, us about, because that's, um, I think we've seen pictures of that on social media. I put an Instagram out. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk a little bit about Sure. It's Swipe? like a Tinder thriller. Um, oh, and, boy. And uh, Anna, <laughs> Anna Hutchinson uh, is the lead, and she's uh, wonderful. Uh, she had a, a film called Cabin in the Woods that I saw that I actually think is really great. It's like, um, uh, I guess it's a horror film, but it's like, it's pretty brilliant. It's really yeah. smart. Um, and this is like a fun kind of thriller, you know? Mm -hmm. the, uh, Tinder is very scary to me. Yeah. All well, that's is what that's ca very... this is capitalizing on. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So now I'm going to watch that movie and like after that, delete my, my Tinder. So this will... <laughs> <laughs> this will make me do that. Um, and can you tell us about the the Lifetime movie uh, that's uh, premiering in June? Because Lifetime movies, they will suck you in. Mm. Yeah. I recently had that happen to me. So I try to, like, skip over Lifetime movies sometimes because, <laughs> like, sucked in. yeah, because you, you have things to do. But, like, you're just like, oh, no, I want to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So you just kind of sit. So tell us uh, about the, the movie that's coming up in June. And, of course, we will remind you guys when right. it premieres and, yeah. and all that. So Yeah, I'm excited about it. We, they, they assembled a really great cast for it. Um, Katrina Bowden from 30 Rock. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's his name? Chris Zilka from The Leftovers and mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Uh, and uh, Olivia Crochicia, who is in a film that I really loved called Palo Alto, um, are kind of the leads. And um, they shot it in Mississippi. It's a thriller. It's about um, kind of these two young mothers. And you know from the beginning that one of them is going to kill the other one. And mm -hmm. so you kind of spend the movie guessing, guessing. like, who's, how's this going to go down? Um, so it's fun, and, and I it was it was really fun to write. It was, it was great. Nice. Well, we will definitely tune in to that. I will make sure that I watch that in June. And yeah. Make sure that we and mention cool. it and remind everybody. We will. So and it gets the best ratings in Lifetime history. So that way you can write another <laughs> Lifetime movie. I think maybe. we're going to, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. little sneak peek there. Well, yeah. you know, if you need someone with your hair, Mark is available. Okay. I can be a stunt double. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So our, our time is almost double. almost up with with Blake. First of all, I want to thank you so much for coming in. And, yeah, thank and you for having reliving me. Reliving your your days of our lives moment. Uh -huh. um, reliving the days of my life. 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 Dun, dun. Dun, you saw what I did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Set that up. Uh, <laughs> before we uh, be, before we leave, will you let everyone know where they can follow you, like on Instagram, Twitter, what other social media stuff that you have? Yeah, I'm on uh, both, and uh, it's just my name, Blake Barris. One word. <laughs> you're, so, you're so simple in that simple. way. I like that. Easy to find. Yes, very easy to find. So make sure you guys follow him so that way you can keep up with all things Blake Bears. And Mark, where can they find you? Mine's simple and easy too. Lorraine Love. L-O-R-A-Y-N-E-L-O-V-E. That's not simple. 
Because everyone, everyone always asks, what's, this, what's Lorraine love? Well, Google it, and you'll <laughs> be careful what you look for, though. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and, of course, you guys can find me on all social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and did I name them all? And Facebook, and at Facebook. Lounging with Tony. And, and Tinder, too, right? And, <laughs> If you find me on Tinder, make sure you swipe right <laughs> to see if we're a match. And, of course, you can find me on loungingwithtony.com. And, of course, every week we bring you a weekly recap of your favorite soap opera days of our lives every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you tune in then. Once again, thank you so much, Blake, for coming thank in. Thank you for having me. And thank you guys for tuning in. And we will see you next time on AfterBuzz TV's Spotlight On. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.